Hey everyone, Happy New Year and welcome to my YouTube channel, Strix Outdoors. This channel is all about the pursuit of fin fur and feathers, and with it I share my hunting and fishing adventures, and also provide technical information about different products that I use and come across, tips and techniques that have helped me as I strive to become more proficient at all these things. So if that resonates with you, or you like what I do in these videos, I invite you to hit the subscribe button. It's January 2021, this is the first video for the year, and my goal this year is to hit 10,000 subscribers, and I'd really appreciate your support in doing that. As always, one of the greatest things that you can do to support this channel, and the only thing I ask in return for sharing this information is for you to bullseye that beautiful like button and leave comments down below. All right, in this quick video, I'm just gonna go over how I simply process a sandhill crane. Now, it is pretty straightforward, but it can be a little bit daunting for those that have never done it. So I'm gonna go through it. And basically what we're simply gonna be doing is filleting out the breast meat and also getting the thighs. Uh, now, specifically with this sand hill, I'm intending to do a stuffer decoy out of this. Uh, and I'm gonna do a video on that a little bit later. So be sure to stay tuned for that. So I'm gonna try to minimize the amount of cuts or incisions I'm gonna make in the hide. So uh, let's jump right in. All right, so we got our beautiful greater sandhill crane that we shot this morning. A couple things that will make this job a lot easier for you is a good, sharp knife. Guys, life's too short to be dealing with dull knives. Um, you know, you can become very proficient at sharpening them, which I highly recommend you do. It's a good skill to have. But uh, for delicate work, you know, these little replaceable blade knives, this is a Gerber, and I also have the Havilon Peranta are just fantastic. Uh, I'll leave links in the description below if you want to check these out if you don't know about them, but uh, they're really awesome. All right, so in addition to that, since I am trying to save as much of the hide as I can, one of the things that's going to be really handy to cut off the legs is a set of loppers. Now, you can use shears. They, you, know, you have specific bird shears, but uh, those tend to be light duty for this size bones. You can do it, but it's a lot easier with these. Now, generally, I would also recommend wearing latex gloves, but... Uh, since those are in short supply right now, I will be going uh, without. All right, we're going to start with just lopping off the legs here. We're going to do it as close to the drumstick as uh, we can. Uh, excuse the dogs barking in the background. So we'll just get this knocked out of the way and make it a little bit easier. I just cut right through, but you do have a little bit of a tendon there. So since we are trying to keep the hide and I want to get the thighs out, I want to go down and try to search for about where the vent is um, down here, and that's where we're going to start. And these blades are razor sharp, so what you want to do is just try to get, open it up and try to get down to the skin. So once you get the incision going, what you want to do is try to slip the blade, blade side up just underneath the skin. And you to just slowly work your way up. Really, I'm trying to do my best not to cut into the meat very much at this point. But you want to try to find the breastbone and just cut right up along uh, that breastbone. All right, now once you've made your long cut there, you can do a lot by just using your hands and fingers to, to pull all this back. Again, since we're trying to keep the hide intact, you can also pull these thighs out instead of having to cut. What you do is you want to get work your thumb back underneath and behind this thigh, and then just pull it back up through the skin there, and you get it free. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Now if you push down, it'll dislocate the joints here and that'll make it a little bit easier to work. Now if you've never had Sandhill Crane, it's an excellent table fare. They call it ribeye in the sky for a reason. It tastes a lot like beef uh, and you cook it like a good beef steak. So here, we're just gonna fillet this meat off the bone here. This is where a little knife like this comes in really handy. It's just really finesse allows you to finesse the blade in there and uh, try to get all of the meat. Now 
Now guys, we work too hard to get these animals. We uh, you know, want to try to utilize as much as we can, so I'm really trying to get make cuts and be careful and, and really maximize the amount of meat when I get off of this. You're going to feel where the uh, bone is for the, the wing joint there. We don't need to cut through that. We're cutting around it. We're just taking this breast meat off. All right, there we go. It's beautiful breast meat off this crane. We're going to clean it up later. Uh, before we cook it. Now you can notice that it's got this silver skin on here. You definitely want to take the time and remove this before you grill it because it does become quite tough. Another thing, this crane looks like it took a couple pellets, uh, several pellets to the chest, so you'll also want to massage this meat really well and try to work out any BBs that might still be left in it. Crunching on a BB is a good way to make an emergency visit to the dentist, so you definitely want to take the time and be careful when you're doing that. Now, it's been a long time since I had ostrich meat, but in my opinion, from what I can remember anyway, this is very similar in taste. For any of you guys that have had ostrich meat and have had crane, I'm curious what you think. Am I uh, just remembering incorrectly or is that a fair assertion there? There we go. All right, now for the thighs, the hard part's already over. So this is fairly simple. You, uh, you push back, you try to dislocate that ball and then you cut cut around to just to, to free the, the joint there. So you got the ball joint right there, and uh, you're gonna use that as a reference. And just basically cut around it. Now I've grilled this, um, and I've also smoked it. And it was really good. You know, it's not going to be as uh, tender as the breast meat. And definitely down here in the drum, you're going to get a lot of tendons. Uh, it's not the best, but all this stuff is really good. So it's definitely worth keeping. So I'll be doing some cooking videos following up to this to show you how I cook these things. So uh, be sure to stay tuned, subscribe, hit the notification bell. So uh, you'll be sure to be notified when those videos come out. All right, so if you weren't keeping the carcass or didn't didn't care for the hide, then uh, basically you're done. You would discard the rest of it. There is a little bit of meat left, but generally I find it's not worth trying to chase this. Uh, it's very, very little. So really, by taking the breasts and the thighs, you're getting, I would say, 90% of it uh, and, and definitely a good use of the bird. Uh, for those that are interested, I'm not a big fan, but you can also look at the organs, gizzard, and such. Um, you know, Also something worth pursuing uh, if that's something that you enjoy. All right, guys. Well, I hope that helped. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for uh, hunting videos and, again, the cooking videos, like I said, on this particular bird. Really do appreciate your support. I uh, wish everyone the best in 2021, and I will see you in the next video.